My two sons both come to Life Start. Xavier is the oldest one. He's nearly four now. He has an autism spectrum disorder and his younger brother Zachary has a very rare genetic condition which leaves him with severe to profound disabilities. I'm so thankful for Life Start. I was originally coming here with Zach. He was referred here when he was about four months old. Uh, and as part of the service, they were looking after Xavier for me. The changes in him in the last six to nine months have been enormous. He's gone from obsessed with doors and all he would do was open and close doors and being very scared and freaking out in a public environment to he goes up to people and says hello now, he says bye bye to people. He still plays with doors but not as much. We can go out and have a bit more of a life now so it's been great. I guess you know I look back to when my husband and I got married and we planned our life together and we thought about you know how much we could afford to buy a house for and we did all that kind of thing. Uh, you don't sit down and plan to have two children with disabilities. Um, they're completely unrelated to each other and nobody knows the cause of either of my children's disabilities. So I would say to anyone out there, you just never know. We insure everything else, we insure our house, our car. There's nothing more important though than your health and you can, at the moment there's, there's, there's nothing. This happens to you and life as you know it is completely different. So. It's such a valuable thing to have, to have that bit of support if you, end up, if you end up in my situation. Can you tell me a little bit about James? Um, James is four and um, he was a failure to thrive baby. Mm -hmm. um, just didn't gain weight, was really struggling. Um, had many, many tests and came up with no conclusive diagnosis basically, but he's got um, very, very low tone and some abnormalities in his brain and he was, has esophageal reflux disease, so. And Maggie? Um, uh, my son's Nichols, he's mm -hmm. four now. Um, he started at life, life started eight months and um, he didn't have a formal diagnosis at first. Actually, everyone was saying he was fine. Um, but uh, by nine months he wasn't sitting up and life started, so they'd take him in and it, it was just wonderful to have this service. Um, the paediatricians were saying to me that there was absolutely nothing wrong, but I knew deep down that there was something. And um, it took him till two and a half to start walking, but thanks to the uh, physio and the OT that he had through life start, um, it was just it's just been fantastic. So why do you think it's important that people get behind the NDIS campaign? We need support from the public to get the movement happening because there's a long way to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's also um, just understanding that every individual um, is important and deserve it, you know they have the right to live um, to their potential. But it's it's the emotional, um, it's it's the time that you put into this child. There's there's a lot of things you, you need respite. There is there's so much that goes into taking um, care of a child. There's, an, a, there's a loss to the community from professional parents as well and carers because, you know, I, I'm a professional. Maggie's a professional. We can't work. We can't contribute to the society in the way we were and the way we planned. So that's a cost to the community as well as the fact that. We need to get our children up and running so they can contribute when their turn comes. So the, the cost is far greater than you might imagine. It actually is not measurable.